we're going to talk about squat and how squat impacts jumping ability, explosiveness, specifically for volleyball. And I'll let you guys just kind of look at this, and I'm going to use an analogy here of when you build a race car, right? And first on the left, I guess the point is there's two different kinds of race cars we're going to talk about tonight, right? Uh, up top's a funny car, and it's a dragster, right? How fast can you go a quarter mile? How long does it take? Two or three hundred miles an hour. These guys are doing, you know, what, two, three, four seconds, and they're hitting three hundred miles an hour, quarter mile, and it's done. And then you've got more of an indie type of car down below, so it's high speed for hours, right? And so I'm going to ask you guys to engage a little bit tonight with me, both physically and then maybe mentally here. Um, which is volleyball? Is it more of a dragster? Is it more of an indie car? So it's more of a dragster. But okay. it's a little bit of both because you, you're doing the movement repeatedly. Yeah. I mean, and when I threw it up there today, it's like, yeah, volleyball for the most part, when you time it, and Jim's been going through and showing me, looking at some data, analyzing a typical match, typical rally, how long does an average rally last? And you, you tell me. What's less than 10 seconds. Less than 10 seconds. So if we looked at just and had to make a decision, is volleyball more like a quarter mile dragster or an indie car, the, obvious, the answer's pretty obvious. With that said, you're right, there's certain muscles in the body that end up having to, even in a match, the muscles between your scapular, shoulder blades, they're postural muscles. They have to work, and a lot of them in a match, they're kind of on for a long time. But if we looked at just generally and said, if we were training and we're going to get into a squat, why are we doing a squat? Well, we're doing it to build explosiveness. We're doing it to kind of build a dragster. <clears throat> when you look at a dragster, the first thing, if you're building a race car, you build the frame first. So the first thing you do when you build a race car is you build a frame. The second thing you look at there is, and you guys tell me what that is, springs, coils, control, rocker panels, I mean different things that are giving, they put onto the frame and then the wheels attached to that, but you're building stabilizers, you're building control to where you can actually control the car as it's going down the track and the, the lateral motion it has. Well. When we get in tonight, the analogy is going to be when we're building an athlete, we're building explosiveness, we're also, they have, the athlete comes in with the frame, right? And Trent, tonight I may, you're the young guy in the group, I may point at you as our young volleyball player, right? Even though you're 18, 19, we're still maybe going to use you as a model tonight. But for all of us, we all have stabilizers, and there's muscles in the body that work as stabilizers. And so I'll ask you guys, if we don't put stabilizers on, what happens? Right? I mean, if you just try to slam the wheels onto the frame, what happens? Yeah, and there's no control, and it's hard, and you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do very well sitting in there. It wouldn't be very comfortable. Well, for an athlete, it's the same thing. We're going to build stabilizers, and they have function in the body, even with jumping and being explosive, and we'll come back to that. Everybody wants to get down to the drivetrain, the, you know, the engine here. So in this case, they show a big Corvette engine sitting there, high, probably six, seven, eight hundred horsepower sitting there. And that's what, as athletes, we think we want to build motors. We want to build the muscles, right? And we want a lot of horsepower. And we know if we're talking about vertical jump, right, and explosiveness, we want motors, right? Uh, and we'll come back and talk about that. Motors and, 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 and muscles are important. Um, but if I ask you guys, you put the drivetrain in the chassis, right? Um, what else is missing? How do you make that motor run? What's missing? Fuel. Fuel. So the bottom right there is, you know, it's a race car, that's fuel injection and whatever else is involved. You've got to get fuel into the engine. What else is missing? Oxygen and spark, electrical, right? So you've got a wiring system, right? Well, if we look at an athlete, we're going to talk about building an athlete in just a second. There's a lot of similar analogies. We've got to frame the skeletal system, right? We've got to drive train with your muscles, but muscles in the same way a car has a big engine, right? We'd like to have a lot of power there. But we have to have fuel, so fuel comes from the food the athlete eats, right? They gotta eat right. What else? They gotta have a spark. Actually, the muscles, when they contract, the nervous system is sending an impulse, microvolts of electricity, from your brain down to the muscles you're gonna use. So if you're gonna jump, you got your glutes, calves, quads, hamstrings, all those muscles and other muscles as well that are firing. Just like we see in engines firing, the muscles are firing as well. So when we get into the squat, we're going to talk about, well, what muscles need to fire? And then I'm going to remind you once again, it's not just the big Corvette engines, the drivetrains, which might be the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, the calves, the big guys, but there's a lot of other little muscles in there around the hips and pelvis, and we'll talk about the core, that need to be trained. And if you don't train those right, 
then you've got a race car that's out of control. It can't go straight down the track. If it's an Indy car, it can't handle the corners. It's not very comfortable and the thing breaks down. Something's breaking down, right? Now we talk about building an athlete and we're guys here, right? <clears throat> and so guys, we, we like a little testosterone. We get into that world, especially strength conditioning where we think, well, a little bit's good, a lot is better, right? Well, if we look at the guy up, up top, a lot, of, a lot of guys tend to equate an athlete with size and strength, right? And yet, if we look at Trent, Trent looks like a guy off the U.S. men's Olympic team, right? I mean, they almost, look like, they almost look like that's him, right? What's the difference between those two? They both got engines, they both got power, but the point is, when we're building an athlete, it's like building a race car. What kind of car are you trying to build? Are you trying to build a dragster? Are you trying to, to build a car that has a lot of power that's like pulling a sled, right? A tractor pull or something? Or it's got a lot of power, it's not going very far, but it's got to have a lot of power short term. Are you building an Indy car? So when we get talking tonight about volleyball players and building strength in the squat, we may squat for different reasons than the power lifter lifts for. With Trent or with our athletes, with you guys, we're looking for vertical jump, right? We're looking for power to get up in the air either to block jump or to jump up and hit, or to, to dig a ball, something where I'm using that squat to move in the game of volleyball. So once again, we're just saying, what kind of an athlete are we trying to build? We look over on the right side, here's our frame, upper left, there's the skeletal system. The drivetrain's on the right, there's the muscles, and once again, we tend to look at this guy's pretty, pretty well sculptured, right, right? Big muscles. Look at Trent, he was probably a really good player. There's a lot of volleyball players, males, that look just like him. I'm not coming in here trying to build this guy to go on the volleyball court because I know that's not going to equate. All that size and mass isn't going to be used. And in fact, it may actually decrease performance rather than increase it, right? We certainly want power and we want size in certain muscles. More importantly, we want function. And function comes from the nervous system. That's our wiring system, just like the, the electrical system in the car. Your brains, right, send microvolts of electricity down to the muscles and it tells those muscles how to fire. Well, it tells them how to fire once you've established the right connections. And, and so it's like a, a computer in a car, the computer has to have instructions. The muscles, when we're going to use tonight and talk about squat, also have to have instructions. Some of those instructions are innate, they're built into the basic body, right? But then as an athlete and as a coach then, then we're trying to cue the athlete, hey, we don't want this motion, we'd rather have this motion. And those are instructions that we have to develop not only in the brain, but then the brain signaling and telling the muscles what to do. Make sense? The last thing on the bottom right, nice picture, little fuel, right? What they eat, you know, is very important in terms of can they squat? How much can they squat? How much can they lift? And can they make it through a, a, a tournament? Can they make it through a three or four day qualifier, an event? How you fuel the body is also important, right? I'm going to change terms and I'm going to get away from building size and strength and I'm going to tell you what we do in sports, we train movements. When you train an athlete, unlike if I was training a bodybuilder to train muscle mass, I'm not. If I'm training Trent or we're working together to train some of your players, we're actually training movements, sport movements in this case. So you can look over here and just say you choose the sport, they're all motions, they're all different movements. On the right side, all right, now we're getting into you guys' world, we're getting into the volleyball world. All those are specific movements, whether we've got a hitter, whether we've got you know, blockers blocking, we've got somebody digging a ball, doesn't matter. Those are all individual movements. Those require different muscles, some of the big drivetrain muscles, some of the small stabilizers, the control muscles, right, that coordinate and hold things in place. There's a ton of science out there now, and I guess, um, you know, from my background coming to you guys, this is where I eat, live, and breathe. And you know, I've, I've been doing this, I guess, now for, I don't know, 30 years or something like that. And I'm gonna go back and just quickly tell you the first day in graduate school at CSU in Exercise Science, the stat professor walked in and she made an impact on me. She gave us an assignment that day and said, you have to go to the library, Morgan Library at Colorado State. And she said, you have to go down and find this article, right? So you had to maneuver your way through the, through the library. You're down on the, the basement. So all these scientific periodicals down there, and you get down there, and now you've got to go find right the, the right the right titles, right? You've got to get into the right chapter, the right book, the right article. And basically then what you're doing is the instruction said, now that you've found your article, look around. And her point was, look around, you're in one little article on some little subject might have been on, you know, how do you split a hair? And then you realize you look around and there's how many hundreds of thousands of square feet you're standing in with all this research, all this science. Her point was, 
The more you learn, the more you realize how ignorant you are. And in the sports science world, quite honestly, we're all ignorant. And I've been doing this a long time, and every day, every week, every year, I'm learning something. I don't have all the answers. I've got some of the questions, but I've spent a lot of time and I've learned a lot. And my point to you guys is none of us know it all. And what I'm going to do with you guys tonight is share my expertise, what I know to be right today, right, as we move forward. But the real thing is learn. I'm going to give you a little bit of information. You know, I Google today and real simple, all these pictures are out there, right? This book we actually use, Jim, I think you have this. This is a great book. These other two were just pictures that came up on movement science, right? There's a ton of science out there on exercise. And just like if we went back a couple pictures and looked at like the, the automobile, the race car, and you looked at the electrical system or the fuel system, you look at that and say, oh my goodness, there's a lot going on there. There is. There's a lot going on when we say we're going to, it's not just as simple as say anymore as maybe, maybe it was 30 or 40 years ago, hey, we're going to go play volleyball, and I want you to jump up and block a ball. Because now it's competitive, right? We've got all these clubs, we've got all these athletes, we've got all these colleges, we've got all these coaches. We're trying to help your performance or your player's performance. There's a lot of science. And it really behooves us all, and really I'm going to, come, I'm going to break it down and be totally objective. If I'm a parent and I'm paying you guys as a club coach, I think you have a responsibility just like I have a responsibility to know the science. And people are paying, parents are paying a lot of money for their athlete to be developed and be trained. So it behooves us all that we're constantly learning. And, and we're going to learn tonight, and I'm going to share with you, and you're going to share with me. But it's not done. You know, this is just one little installment tonight. And, and my message to you guys is, I think it's all of our responsibilities to go to, to get books, to read, to study the science. There's a ton of exercise science that's coming out. And once again, what we're going to do today might be wrong in 10 years. But figure out what we're doing today, learn about it, and, and be on board that in 10 years, you know, you're the leaders in what you're doing as a coach. No parrots. So, you know, I grew up playing a sport, you guys all grew up playing a sport, and it doesn't matter what the sport is, what do parrots do? Parrots, the talking parrots tend to do what? Repeat. Repeat what they've heard, right? And even though we all grew up playing a sport, we think what we learned was right. My message to you guys is pure and simple. We learn different things, and it was right if that's all we know, but if you go out and start studying the science, open up your mind, you may find out, well, it was right the way that coach taught me or taught you, it was right at the time. A lot of things are changing. Once again, I'm encouraging you to go and open up the books and study the science. Because there's no way, even in the squat tonight, there's so much involved with it. I'm just going to try to keep it real simple and practical tonight and give you something you can take out of here and really get and, and relate to your players. But if you're really doing the right thing, you're opening the books, you're studying yourself and saying it's, you're not just skill coaches, right? You've got to be a little bit of a strength and conditioning coach. You've got to be a little bit of a therapist. You've got to be a little bit of a sports psychologist. You've got to take all these things together in this day and age to get your athletes to perform and keep them healthy and keep them on the court. So the parrot is what I'm saying is don't be a parrot. Don't just repeat what you've heard and what you learned. Maybe it was right 30 years ago. Maybe it was right last week. Learn. Open up the books and let's, you know, let's be the leaders. And I think we have been. Let's continue to be. So let's get into the squat. And I love the couple of these on the left here, right? I mean, this is so male stuff over here. The first one, squat till you puke, right? Sometimes, and especially on the male side, right, we think that we're going to train athletes, and especially the males, then our analogy is let's bring them in. And, you know, I grew up in the era where you did suicides, right? Until you threw up, right? And then that's when they gave you salt tablets and nobody knew any better. I mean, I grew up in that area 30 or 40 years ago when I was training as a competitive athlete. A lot of things have changed, right? And this, I had a lot of coaches that this was their mentality, right? And ho hopefully that's changing. That's not when we're training a volleyball player to perform. That's not what I subscribe to, and it's based on the science I've learned. And once again, I want you to engage and figure out that science. This one, Jim, you'll love, right? This one says the squat. Improve your form and build tree trunk thighs, okay? So this is an analogy oftentimes that we've seen over the years. The kids, the girls that come through, their, 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 their vertical jumps have peaked, they PR, and then sometimes you see them a year later, they come back and they've come back from the collegiate strength training program and they have tree trunks for thighs. And their verts are down, right? They're down two or three inches, but yet they're bigger and stronger. So what kind of athlete are they developing? Well, we're gonna develop volleyball players. So we're gonna be crystal clear about tonight when we're squatting, we're squatting for volleyball specific reasons, performance wise and injury prevention wise. Let's let them perform, let's keep them on the court, jump higher to block higher, dig, hit a ball harder, et cetera, et cetera. 
We're not trying to make them bigger. We're not trying to make them faster, stronger. We're trying to improve their performance and keep them healthy on the, on the volleyball court. Can I just jump sure, in? absolutely. When you say that we're not trying to make them faster, but we are right. trying to make them faster, right? I would say we're trying to make them quicker, more explosive, okay? Can you just go yeah. With that yeah. For a so, I mean, once again, define terms. Fast, you think of a 100 meter sprinter. They were, they were fast, 200 meter sprint, right? We're not training 200 meter sprinters, 100 meter sprinters. If we were, that's a specific way you would train them from a strength, flexibility, training, mechanics. It's a different way to train. Volleyball athletes, right? I mean, Trent, or you guys, when you're either you're coaching your athletes or you played, how far are you running in a volleyball match, in a rally? How far could you? A few steps. A few steps, right? I mean, if it's a big court, right, maybe you go, what, 20 yards maybe at a full speed sprint? No, Not even there. Yards. 10, okay? Yeah. So I don't think in 10 yards you get to full speed, do you? So it's more of an acceleration, a quickness, and explosiveness. Once again, all we're saying is define the terms. And when I come at you guys, you know, and, and I guess this will be my 14th year or something with Front Range, I've spent a lot of time looking at volleyball trying, and I don't have all the answers, but I've spent a lot of time saying, what's better? And Jim's done the same thing. We've worked on things constantly. What's better? More, what's more specific to volleyball? There's a ton of exercises out there for core strength, for squats. Squat for what? Squat for power, squat for mass, squat for explosiveness, squat for volleyball. Define your terms. And when I come at you, I'm obviously biased tonight about what are we going to do for volleyball and why, okay?